guess what? We have samples available to scientists coming from the asteroid, asteroid Bennu that we received a few months ago. So let's see if we can figure out how we can get the information, but also what information they've given to the public. So let's see if we can have a look together. So let's see, let's see. So here I was looking at the, the NASA blogs because I always love to do so. And here on April 1st, so that's just a few weeks ago, NASA's Osiris Rex asteroid samples are now available to world scientists. So they've opened up the, the, the probe, they collected the data, collected the sand, collected the samples, and now it's available. So let's see what we can see from them. So here we have a beautiful pictures, and you'll see that all the trays where the samples are, we have here the scales in, cent in centimeters. So you can see that some of these rock samples are very fine grain. You can have some pieces, let's say one millimeters to five millimeters, a few that are five to 1.5 millimeters, and some of them are bigger. So this is exciting. So I'm gonna put the link to, uh, I'll pick the link here in the comments when I edit the video. Otherwise, it's gonna be here in the chat for people that are with us. So let's see if we can look at this. Now here you could see that there's a curation teams at the NASA's Johns, uh, Johnson Space Station. And here, this is where they have catalogs of samples. So we're gonna look at the samples from Osiris Rex, but look, it's interesting. Oops, look at this, uh, we need to reformat our, perfect. So the curation department has samples from the moon, from meteorites, stardust. So we collected dust coming from, um, let's see, from comets going through our solar system. We also have cosmic dusts and a few other things. So here we have a team and they just take care of samples. So Bennu asteroid samples, we collected, I think it was about 120 grams or so. Only 25% of that, those samples will be available to scientists right now. So about 75% of those will be available for future scientists five, 10 years down the road, or even 50 years down the road. Keep in mind that technologies are getting bigger, are getting better with the years. So therefore, it would be a great way for to learn more about the samples. Keeping in mind that we still have lunar samples available that haven't been touched yet. And keep in mind that when these came here on the planet in the 60s and 70s, probably the 70s, so that's 50 years ago, so we are learning about lunar rocks that were collected on the moon 50 years ago. But think about how technology have uh, how technologies have changed in the last 50 years, precision and the type of equipment we have. So I think that's why it's important to make samples available, but also keep some for future generation. So here it's a small, a small. Um, there's a lot of text, but here if you go on Osiris Rex. Rex sample information, we have what we call images, and we're going to have a quick look at this. It's always interesting to see images of what exists out there, because that's a good way to learn. So here, there's a list of all the steps that scientists and tech have taken to open the container with the samples. So every time they went into different parts of the canister, so if there were samples, they were collecting them. So let's see. So when they opened it up, let's see if I can give an example. So here's an example where when they opened the first canister. Where is it? Hmm, my internet today. Very good. So here you could see the bolt and you could see how you have the ring of where the a piece of a piece of equipment was and look at the dust that were within the uh, outside of the canister. So what we have, we have scientists Opening up, opening it up, and every time there's some samples, anytime there's materials from Binu, they were collecting it, they were gathering the information. So here I'm going to see about other ones. So here's another example. So here it's on the outside. So here we have the canister here, if I remember well. So we have dust that were all over. So they collected the dust to make sure that they they could maximize all the materials. 
and you could see that every time they had some some more materials it created a sample so these samples are all itemized and they are ready for research so here this is the outside of the canister then they started to open the canister and i don't know if you remember let's take this picture when they open it so the canister is under this plate right here we had a, a I think it was like 30 to 50 grams of materials on the outside here. They were still protected from the atmosphere when they came through the atmosphere, but it's still relevant samples that are ready to use. Now, these are not in the container where everything was sealed 100%, but they're still samples from the asteroid. So that's something to keep in mind. And you can see how it is. And by the way, I noticed that they are all black. And I'm very curious to see why that is. Because the first thing you could think would be, oh, it's like charcoal, but charcoal is made of organic matter. And this, these are samples from an asteroid traveling in our solar system. So it doesn't have the carbon-based life like we have on the planet to get, um, to get what we call uh, coal, for example. So there's a few things I still need to learn. So here was the outside canister. And the more they went through, the more they were able. So here you have the vents where you have the nitrogen coming out. So every time they would open one part, they would collect the data. So let's go to the next series. So here, there are the contact pads, some dust here and there as well. So I'm not sure how big those samples are. So if I have this vent right here and I go and see the sample, it says here there's not even any weight here. So they were just documenting these parts. But as you go down, so this, these were the little vents, then we go into the bulk of the sample. So they opened it up. And then when you open and see this, so you could see in the canister, all the sample that was uh, collected here. So you can see the bolts that were taken out to expose this part here. So this is material from, so if you think about it, let's see if I can do it this way. So here we have materials from the Bennu asteroid, an asteroid that has been traveling into our space, in our solar system, materials not in contact with oxygen, and being basically pristine materials from our solar system, from the, the cre since creation of the solar system. Do we know much about them? Not very much, and that's why they're made available to scientists. So here, if you look under here, you have some of the samples. There we go. And then they divided into trays the information. So here we have the deep, so different trays with some information. So here, some dust from when they opened it up. So here you could see the grains, very fine grains in some particulates few millimeters in diameter but as they went into the sample look at this how beautiful this is you have here pieces of two centimeters so here you'll be able to cut them and try to see the crystalline structure to be able to find the composition being able to figure out what they are and look at this amazing piece right here this is like three three centimeters from this side maybe 3.5 centimeters and like 2.5 centimeters across this is materials from an asteroid not uh, damaged by exposition to our atmosphere keeping in mind that all these samples were dealt with in a contained environment where nitrogen was the only gas available and look at how they look it's amazing I don't know exactly. I think there's some pieces that are phosphorescent. Um, so much to know, and it's very hard for me to figure out. Let's see. Can I get these bit bigger? Oh, look at this. We can get this bigger. Let's see how. Look at the ruler. Let's see if we can find a good. So this is our larger piece. There was, look at these amazing samples from the asteroids. Some of you in the audience might at some point be able to study some of these samples, keeping in mind that only research centers will be able to do so. 
you need to have to share their, your proposal, the budget you have, the type of experiments you want to use, because keeping in mind that only 25% of the samples are available at this time. So it is quite exciting. So here it shows here another part here with some of the samples that are available. Let's see. Might have to do refresh. Perfect. Look at this. So we have another tray right here. So this one here is uh, Ozarex 8000005. So everything is well organized, will be cataloged, and will be available for scientists. See, they all have their own number. So if you are looking for specific, specific samples, it will be available. Perfect. Let's see if there's, a, I can show you more information. So here, for example, if you want to have to request a sample, uh, requesting, there's a whole format and there's also specific documents and forms you can do. So keeping in mind that all of these, they've cost tens of millions of dollars to have access and therefore it's, they don't want to give it to everybody, but still lots of possibilities to do so. Excellent. So this is basically the information we have about Osiris Rex coming, as I say, April 1st. I'm sure the scientific community is very exciting, exciting and excited with uh, this new type of samples. And if you have a chance to play with some of them, please tell me. I'd be more than happy to, to have a conversation for scientists that are working with these samples. If it happens that you have any questions, put them in the comments below. I'll be more than happy to do some research to answer them. Otherwise, I'm gonna put here on the side, probably on this side right here, a video that I did when Osiris came back here on Earth with their samples. It was quite exciting. And it's still something that interests me greatly. We're talking about matter from outer space from which we can learn so much. As a geologist, it's exciting. And on this, I'm going to put you, I'm going to share here the link and I'll see you in the next video.